All right, we're back again. Except now we're going to look at saxophone mouthpieces that, that do not have a step baffle. So we're going to look at mouthpieces that have very little baffle. They usually have a darker sound. And ones that have a slight rollover baffle, they'll have darker sound, but because the airstream moves over the little hump there, it's sped up. We're kind of, you know, if you think about an airplane wing. And the sped up air causes a little bit of um, added edge and projection. So we'll look at those next. If you haven't seen my last video about step baffles, we'll review that right here real quickly. This first mouthpiece here, you can see this big flat region here. You see this very little depth to the mouthpiece here before it drops down to the throat. This next one here, there's a little bit more less than that, but still a fairly high step baffle before it steps down into the throat. You can see there. This next one, if you look real closely, look at the edge. You can see that it's kind of, this edge here stays up fairly high before it starts rolling down into the throat. And this keeps the airflow fast with this being higher here, but it gets more normal. This alto piece here, a little bit dirty, but it basically starts rolling down a little bit here before it starts rolling down to the throat. Also, you can see, if you look at the edges, they're scooped out. Now, th these items are less pronounced on clarinets, and we'll get to those in a later video, but you have to be able to visually see the differences. And with this here, we can actually see the differences a little bit better than once we get the clarinets. Clarinets do not have step baffles, so I haven't seen any. Now here's a few more as an example. This is one of the candles we had earlier. Very slight, if any, tip kind of starts going down into the throat. This is a Selmer classic mouthpiece. You'll see there is a little bit of like a baffle in the middle, but the edges drop down right straight into the throat. Now this actually has a raised roof right here. So even though it's a classic mouthpiece, or designed for classical tone on a tenor. It still has a lot of um, push to it. This mouthpiece here, we can see the baffle here kind of stays up. This tip kind of extends down, so keeps the airflow fast before it dumps right down to the throat. This one here, we can more clearly see that it kind of straight ramp down here before falling back down to the throat. So be, this base has more edge, and this would be a darker tone. Also on saxophone mouthpieces, you'll see that many times on the older ones, these edges, the sides will be cut out. And that allows the airflow to be slower and a little bit darker. Here's a few more examples people may be more familiar with. This is a summer C80 C double star, a C single star. This is a Larry Teal model. And this is an old woodwind model. We'll get to that in a minute. This one here, we can see, if you look at the edge, compared to the regular C star, this is basically both close to being the same. This one is a wider tip. And this one is not as wide of a uh, tip. So C star, you do a three and a half, three read. You can get to three and a half, two and a half read on this one. This one here to Larry Teal, you see the tip rail kind of goes a little bit further back and it kind of stays up a little bit more compared to these before it goes rolling down into the throat. Of course, the Larry Teal with a regular SAs, you have a square throat. The Larry Teal went with a round throat. And this woodwind here has a really wide throat, as you can see in there. And you may not be able to see it very well, but these sides are kind of scooped out. You can see this goes in more before it actually rolls back up. Here's a couple alto mouthpieces. I believe this is a cuff, like 5R. 
this is an old ideal mouthpiece. If you notice at the tip, you can see the tip rail is easily defined here. Visually see that very easily. And everything else kind of drops nicely down into the throat for both of them. So these are dark, dark sounding mouthpieces. You know, just looking at this, these, you can actually identify how it's going to play really by itself uh, without the rest of the instrument. So there's more of the baffles. I want to thank you for watching this quick episode about mouthpiece baffles. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you later. Mm -hmm.